Hey, what's going on? I'm Josh with Modus Create, and today we're talking about one of my favorite topics. In this video, we're covering the basics of customizing workflows in Jira so the teams out there can better understand how Jira works and how they can make it work better for them. For years, I've been helping teams administer and customize workflows in Jira and Jira Service Desk. And it's amazing how much a properly configured workflow can impact the productivity of a team. However, I've seen so many teams out there using Jira that already have custom workflows and they have been using Jira for years, but these custom workflows don't fit and they serve as a point of frustration and confusion and oftentimes blockers to work getting done. And that's why we're making this video today for all the project managers and scrum masters and team leads out there that are using Jira, but don't really know what their workflow can do for them. And for the Jira administrators out there learning how to better support the teams in their instance. I'm gonna show you the basic components of building a workflow in Jira. I'm gonna share you some tips that we've learned over the years of creating these custom workflows. And I'm going to show you the number one thing that every workflow needs to be successful that oftentimes is missed by users. So what is a workflow? Workflow may be a term that you're familiar with, um, but essentially a workflow is a process. It is a collection of repeatable steps. In Jira specifically though, it's good to think about a workflow as the life cycle of an issue. There's a couple of visualizations of workflows you may be familiar with. One is the diagrams that we've all seen with different statuses and transitions that flow from top to bottom or left to right. The Kanban board can also represent a workflow, representing the progress an issue can take um, over the course of its life cycle from left to right. So now that we understand conceptually basically what a workflow is and kind of what it looks like, we're gonna dive into some more details and actually build a workflow from scratch in Jira. So the next steps I'm gonna be taking are as a Jira administrator. And I understand that many of you out there are not Jira administrators in the instances that you work in, and that's okay. The point here today is that you understand how these workflows are built and how they function, such that you can have educated conversations with those users or those people at your work that do build workflows. And here's pro tip number one today. Coming from someone that has worked for years for different support and infrastructure teams, every administrator's favorite type of request is an educated request. Before I dive into the details, if you like what you're seeing so far, be sure to give the video a like and share with a colleague or a friend. And if you want to see more content like this or have questions you want answered, make sure to leave a comment below. All right, let's dive in. So here we're looking at our administrative view of all of the active workflows in the system. To create a new workflow, you can see in the top right here, we have two options to add a workflow or we can import one from the marketplace. For our purposes today, we'll just start a new workflow from scratch. The workflow today we're gonna to be building is for a marketing team to track the blogs from idea to published. And now we're presented with the workflow designer. You can see there's some buttons across the top of the designer. And in the middle, we have essentially a, a workflow the, with the bare minimum requirements, one transition and one status. The circle here represents the initiating event of the process. And that initiating event is when a user completes the create form and clicks submit. In this workflow, when an issue is created, it goes into open and then doesn't have any more options. And that really doesn't work for us. So let's start creating some customization here. So first let's talk about the status. The status represented here by the box of color and text. If I select it, you can see the name of it, the status is open. It has the description to it right here. It has this option to allow all statuses to transition to this one. And this is a switch that you can turn on and off for every status in the workflow. And essentially is just kind of an open door. Um, it allows that any workflow status other than this one can automatically move transition to this status. So even if you add new statuses to the workflow, it'll still have an option to transition to this status. To see what that looks like, if I click it, you can see the all in the diagram, which again, doesn't work for us, so we're gonna remove it. And just to kind of give you a look at how these statuses are built, if I select edit, there's three components of this status setting. The name, the description, and the category. 
Which brings me to pro tip number two, that while you're editing these workflows, any updates to status configuration are a system-wide setting. So changing a status will change it for everybody in the system. So a good rule of thumb is if you have a status that's being used by teams, don't edit it. If you have to edit it, make sure that you work with and communicate that with the teams using it. The name is self-explanatory. It should be concise and clear and describe what has happened or is happening to the issue. The description is just some helpful text to help people understand what's going on. And the category here is simply that. Every status is in one of these three categories, to do in progress and done. And it's supposed to denote a bird's eye view where that issue is or where that status is along that entire process or that entire life cycle. It's important that when you do, or if you do create these statuses, that you make sure that the status categories align with the meaning of the status. This will be very helpful in grouping statuses later and making it easier to create reports and filters and the like. We're gonna cancel out here and we're gonna add some new statuses here to help us build out what our workflow is gonna be like. So to add a status, I simply come up here and I can use the select list given to me or I can start typing. And you can see here that two things, that there's a status called draft that I wanna use, I'm going to select, but at the bottom, because I'm a Jira administrator, I have the option to add new statuses here on the fly. And again, you're gonna to wanna to be careful. Try to reuse the statuses whenever possible. We're gonna make sure we select draft. We are not gonna allow universal transition and we're gonna click add. And there you go, you can tell that the draft color is blue here as opposed to the gray of open because draft is an in progress status. And to fill out the rest of the workflow real quick. These status points are the basic building blocks of the workflow. They resemble where an issue can be at any point in this process. I've got one more change I wanna make. This open status where when an issue is first created doesn't really fit the, for this workflow. Because they're gonna be processing a backlog of ideas for blog articles, we wanna create this initial status to be a backlog to be a little more clear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that status of backlog. The only problem is I can't get rid of open. If you see, because open is associated with the initial transition, if I try to remove it, it tells me I can't. So to fix this, I just change it to create transition, which allows me then to get rid of that unwanted status, which is a good segue to talking about transitions. Transitions, simply put, are just the connection points, the paths between statuses that issues can navigate through the workflow. Unlike statuses, transition configurations are specific to the workflow and won't impact others. Select this Create Transition and click Edit. And like the status, it has a simple name and description, but different here is that you can associate a screen with a transition. Simply put, a screen is a collection of fields or data points that you can collect during the transition. For right now, we're gonna leave this alone and go back to the workflow to fill out some more transitions. So to add a new transition, you can come up here and select the Add Transition button. And then we have to fill out a few data points here. Well, I wanna move from the initial status, backlog, to the second status of when somebody wants to start drafting the workflow and it'll be a draft. And the name here is important that it describe what I'm doing. It should be an activity. But this, is a, this also resembles the button that many users will select when trying to create this transition if using the issue view. And there you have it. You can see our diagram has been updated. An easier way to create transitions is through the diagram. You can see the connections points on the status. If you hover and select one of these connection points and drag, you can create connection points that way. This also pre-populates the from and to status, which I like better. So going from draft to under review, a transition that makes sense would be submit for review. And once under review, approve would be a good transition here. And then at the final step, from approved to when the blog article is completed, 
we're actually going to call this publish. That's a little bit more descriptive of what's actually going on here. Okay, so now we have a process. Do you see anything missing? There's a couple of things. But mainly, we, we have set up an approval here, but we need to make sure we give the approval two options. We give them the approve option from under review to approve. But what if they don't approve? We need to give them that option also. So we're going to drag and drop from under review back to draft. And we're going to call this reject. And there's one more thing missing, which brings us to pro tip number three. And the one thing that many users miss, but every workflow needs, and that is a resolution. Like every good story, a workflow needs a resolution. And there's a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way and the simplest way is to add one of those screens to our transition. And I'll show you that real quick. The reason why it's important and because when a resolution is applied to an issue of any kind, that's when JIRA as a system acknowledges that issue is quote unquote resolved. It updates some metadata and it impacts numerous reports that may not be obvious at first, like the assigned to me gadget on your dashboard. When an issue is resolved or added a value to the resolution field, it, it is removed from those reports automatically because you don't need to see things you've already completed. We're going to select this transition publish. And we're going to edit. And we're going to select one of these pre configured screens that already exist in the system. I happen to know that there is a resolve issue screen that we're going to use here. What this will do is allow the users to set that resolution field during the transition. And that's it. That is a complete successful workflow in just a few minutes. So next, we're going to take a quick look at what this workflow looks like from the Kanban view. And here we see a new updated Kanban with the statuses that we created. And that's set with the transitions as we created them. So we can take an issue and approve it. Then we can publish it. And then we're presented with the screen that we set up. You'll notice the resolution is here that we can apply. We'll just go with done and publish. And there you go. And that's it. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to take a workflow just like this one and take a look under the hood and see what advanced workflow functions can really do for this workflow. And don't forget, the best way to support this our team and to get more content like this is to like and share this video. And if you want to be notified of new content, subscribe to the channel and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.